Hi everyone, in this week's episode of Monkey Shorts, I wanna take a look at what happens when we have errors in our data table and how it affects what we may wanna do when we're unpivoting things. So let's go uh, take a look at our data here. You'll notice that my CIDR column here, I've got some errors in it. And if I just click in the white space beside it, you can see that one of them was caused by a hash div zero error inside the Excel cell that I pulled it from. Uh, another one here with a hash NA. So definitely some challenges. Now. If I don't want these values, I don't need them in any way or anything like that, I can actually suppress this during an unpivot by just going and right clicking on it and saying replace errors and choosing to replace them with a null value. And of course, once it's a null, if we then go right click and unpivot other columns, those data points will just be suppressed, no big deal. But there's some challenges with this. So let me just go back here for a second, delete these two steps, because if you're gonna safeguard this way, you probably really want to actually remove your errors across all three columns. If I go right click on this though, you'll notice that the only option I have is to remove errors and not replace them. So I would need to replace errors on every individual column. So the question comes back, is there another way to do this? Because that seems like it could be a lot of work, especially if you've got lots of columns. What happens if you unpivot it while there's errors in it? Well, the answer is it just works. If we unpivot other columns, all the errors come across, and now we're only gonna have one column on the other side for values, so we can right click and we can replace values or we can replace errors in either case here. So I could easily go back and replace my errors with null at this point. Of course, that doesn't get rid of them, so I would now need to actually do a filter to remove those records. So the question comes down to first, if you're only dealing with a single column or if you wanna replace errors across multiple columns to suppress those values, that might be the best way to do it. Why would you wanna leave them here though? Well, the answer goes like this. Maybe I actually want to reference this and have a data set of good data where we actually go and say, look, let's just go and, um, I can't do it through this one here, but let's go right click and uh, we will um, remove our errors and get rid of all the rows that have errors. And then over on this other table, we can reference it and we can actually have another one where we actually list our bad data. And on this one, we could go right click on this one here and instead of removing errors here, well, it's unfortunately not on the right click menu. What we can do instead though, is we can go and keep rows with errors so we can see exactly which ones actually cause the errors here. So this is gonna make things a little bit easier if we're trying to audit things back later to try and figure out what actually caused these problems. So how you actually handle these things before or after is entirely based on your needs. If you're not gonna do error reconciliation like this, you just wanna wipe them out, might be a better idea to wipe them out before the unpivot. But if you do wanna track these things and figure out what's going on, after is definitely the route that you want to go. Thank you for watching this episode of Monkey Shorts. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to click on the Skillwave logo on the bottom left in order to subscribe to our channel. Or if you'd like to see more videos in the series, click on the playlist tile on the right. And if you'd like to get more comprehensive training, you should definitely check out our website at skillwave.training.